Welcome back. They've been around for over 40 years, but do you know anything about them? Jamie Ross caught up with the UMB Woodsman Lumberjack team to find out what it means to be a woodsman. Whether you've heard of them or not, the UMB Woodsman Lumberjacking team has a tradition of winning that dates back to the early 1960s. Based here at the Forestry and Geology Building on the UNB campus, the Woodsman's winning ways are demonstrated by the impressive trophy case that boasts dozens of awards and championships. Although lumberjacking has been relatively underground at the school in the past, team faculty advisor Jason Golding says the sport is growing. Uh, traditionally, there's been more alumni attending these events over the years, but it, it seems to be growing. Uh, there seems to be more media exposure. And uh, with the growing alumni from, uh, from the faculties, uh, they're coming back and, and they want to be part of the competition as well. Great. As defending Canadian intercollegiate lumberjacking champions, the Woodsmen are made up of two men's teams and one women's team. Each team has seven competitors. The sport features a unique mix of 13 individual and team events that require a well-rounded lineup of athletes. Team captain Bill Freeman said this year's squad is sitting pretty for another first place finish. This year, uh, well, we're reigning champs from last year. We won the league last year, and uh, right now um, we're sitting in first place. And our uh, men's two team is uh, sitting in third place, I believe. And they're doing really good. We're really strong this year. We got a lot of depth. What sets the Woodsmen apart from the other teams on campus is their self sufficiency. Both the team president and the team's coach are competitors and forestry students. Also, the woodsmen raise all their own money and plan all of their own road trips for away competitions. The team's head coach, Andrew Holt, says he's proud of how much the woodsmen are able to accomplish. I just think that this team is uh, a spectacular thing, and I think there should be more organizations like this on campus. These are really some of the finest individuals I've ever had the pleasure to work with and we do so much with very little. We, we raise all our own funds, we completely support and organize ourselves and it's honestly impressive what these guys do on a regular basis to put this on. Very impressive. Whether or not they get the recognition they deserve, the UNB Woodsman team plans to continue winning, hacking away the competition one log at a time. For Stu Journalism, I'm Jamie Ross. Snow's on the ground and there's a frosty chill in the air. But does that mean it's time for tinsel ornaments and indoor evergreens? TJ Milburn takes us inside one apartment's experience with this hot issue, early Christmas spirit. Can't study, can't sleep, it's just another annoyance. They have the apartment decorated, and now there's Christmas music. <sighs> Megan like Steves doesn't call herself a Grinch, but last week, when her roommates decorated their apartment for Christmas, the UMB student had to say something. She says early holiday spirit isn't a great fit with all the apartment's tenants. She used to say they're overly Christmas spirited, you know? Like, what is a Grinch anyway? Someone who hates Christmas. Okay, don't really hate it. Just think it's people celebrate it entirely too early. Steve says her roommate, Katie Hurdle, a fellow UMB student, is the chief Christmas decoration architect. I love Christmas. I think it's a wonderful time of year. And I think it needs to be extended as long as it possibly can be. Are you in the Christmas spirit, honey? Yeah? Do you love Christmas? Yes, you do. I love Christmas. Yes, I do. You know, that's just am animal cruelty. If I didn't have to live with these people, I'd call them in. I feel a little bad having it around her when I know she doesn't like it, but it's got to be done. We won't be here past, you know, like the first week of December, so we want to kind of make our apartment a little Christmas haven for the time we're here, so it's just the way it's going to be. Decorations aren't the only sign people are getting ready for Christmas. Salt boxes like this one have popped up all over campus, and the famous wooden planks on the stairs have made their annual appearance. The wooden slats on the there's definitely Christmas season-y. Edmonds, a St. Thomas student, says the planks do remind him of the holidays, but it's not something he's overly excited about. I hate getting ready for Christmas early. Uh, I think that it should be kept, you know, at least to December, not uh, as soon as Halloween 
is done, we throw up all our decorations and get ready to go. I can't stand Christmas music. I hate it. While everyone may not be thrilled about the early signs of Christmas, even they admit it's got to come sometime. From a cold St. Thomas campus, this is T.J. Milburn for Stew Journalism. World Series champ Matt Stairs made his triumphant return back to Fredericton. Chris Fox was there and has more on the story. It was a hero's welcome Saturday for Fredericton's Matt Stairs, who after helping guide the Philadelphia Phillies to a World Series just last month, returned home for a two-hour autograph session at the Regent Mall with all proceeds going towards the Fredericton Boys and Girls Club. The event kicked off at 1 o'clock, but hundreds of fans were lined up long before that, with the first few trickling through the Regent Mall doors at 10 a.m. John Baker was one of those people. He played midget hockey with Stairs 25 years ago and said even then it was clear Stairs had a gift. Very competitive and very good at whatever he, he, he tried, so uh, I think it was surprising to me when he, when he chose baseball, but at the beginning he played in Mexico, he played in China, uh, He's been all around the world playing, playing baseball, so uh, he really stuck with it, and I think it's a great story. Stairs, although slightly tired after signing everything from baseballs to frame photos for nearly two hours, said he was happy to do the event. These days, Stairs lives in Maine with his wife and two daughters, so he enjoys it whenever he can get home and see old friends. Something that I wanted to get back, that was a good way to put that. You know, donations towards the uh, Boys and Girls Club. And, you know, it's, it's amazing how many emails I get throughout the year from fans from the Brunswick, and that's just a good way to get back and enjoy coming up and seeing some friends and, and doing some autographs. As for future celebrations of his World Series in Fredericton, Stairs was taking a wait and see approach Saturday. You know, I heard they were going to give me a uh, name of street after me, which is an honor. Uh, and a few other things I haven't really had a chance to talk to you guys about it. But mm -hmm. I imagine the next couple of weeks I'll sit down and talk to you guys, and I mean, whatever they do, it's a great honor. For Stu Journalism, I'm Chris Fox. Thanks for tuning in for this week's edition of the Stu Basement Case. Check us out online at www.stubasementapes.wordpress.com. You've seen our office, our mess, our pizza boxes, and our video games. Now get out. <laughs>